As I reflected on this gospel this week, I thought of a few things from my own life. It's hard to believe that this week, it has been a year since I got that phone call from the bishop asking me to come see him about moving here to Keithley and Haworth. And one of the things that people often ask me is, why do priests have to move around? Why can't they stay in one place? Well, today's gospel reading gives us a hint at where this model comes from. It tells us of the missionary journey of the disciples. The gospel tells us that Jesus sent his disciples to every town and place where he himself intended to go. And in a sense, that's what priests do today. They go to a place for a little while, do what they can, and then the bishop asks them to move on to a new town or city where they can use whatever skills they might have to evangelize there. And it can be scary, let me tell you. It's a very strange feeling being told that you have to move from a place that you know. But Jesus gave his disciples instructions, which were practical and specific. He gave them a manual, so to speak, on how to live out the mission that Jesus called them to do. But the truth is, this gospel doesn't just speak about the mission of priests. It says something to all of us, to all of you and me. The church is a family. And just like our own individual families, the reality is that unless everyone takes up some task, things just don't get done. The truth is, each and every one of us is called to take on the role of discipleship, to spread the good news. And that doesn't mean we all have to get out there in pairs and knock on people's doors and stuff. I mean, we're not Mormons. <laughs> but some, some may feel called to do that, but each of us can live out the gospel and spread the good news in our own ordinary lives, in our communities. And another way we do it is simply by living the message of Christ. Now, one of the interesting things in this gospel today is that Jesus instructed his disciples to take nothing for the journey, not even a spare tunic. Now, let me tell you, I feel like a fraud when I think of all the things I had to pack up and take with me when I moved here. So does that mean that Jesus wants us to just sell everything we have and go? Well, no. I mean, can you imagine taking a journey with nothing? But there is a reason why Jesus tells them not to take anything. And I think he has two lessons to teach with this command. He tells them they don't need to bring stuff with them when they are on their journey, because they needed to learn to trust that God will provide for what they need while they're on the journey. Sometimes, you know, when we're packing for a trip or a holiday, we have a list with a million and one things on it to take with us, and it can cause more stress than if we went with nothing. Jesus doesn't want his disciples to be stressed about all of that, and he wanted them to be focused on one thing, and that is his message. He tells them all of that stuff isn't necessary. He wants them to know that God will provide. Jesus wanted them, and he wants us, to learn to trust in God. St. Paul says in the second reading that we are chosen by God to be his instruments in the world. That means he cares for and protects all those who are his chosen children, stamped, as he says, with the seal of the Holy Spirit. Many centuries ago, there was once a young man who went to go see St. Francis of Assisi, and he wasn't sure how to follow Jesus' command to spread the good news. The saint told this young man, I'll show you what to do. So he took him to a place where he helped feed the poor, make new clothes for them, and so on. And the young man said, okay, that's great, but how do I proclaim the gospel? And St. Francis said, I've just showed you. Preach the gospel always, and if necessary, use words. This is how we are all called to preach the gospel. It's in the way we live our lives as parents, grandparents, workers, students, retirees, or whatever walk of life we live. We share what we have, and often the way God provides for others is through you and me in the way we live out our faith. So this week, let us ask God to give us the grace we need to be his messengers in the world, in whatever way we can, always trusting 
in his love and his care for us.